guys, 2018 is quickly coming to a close. It has been an absolutely incredible year for the world of video games. System sales are skyrocketing. Video game sales are skyrocketing. It's been a very strong year for the world of video games, and you're seeing lots of growth within companies and game developers as well. And I thought to myself, there's been so much stuff to talk about in 2018. We have to highlight some of the best things about the video game industry in 2018. But then I also thought, we also have to talk about the worst things of the video game industry in 2018 as well because it all hasn't been sunshine and flowers. There's been a lot of negative stuff in the world of video games as well that definitely needs a spotlight shown on it. So that's exactly what we're going to do in this video. In this video, we're going to talk about the best and the worst of gaming in 2018. So sit back, relax, make sure you subscribe to the channel, and let's jump into this. Hey, RGT85. Hey, Sean. Oh my God, it's Stevie Richards. So first off, I want to talk about the best thing and the worst thing for the three big home console manufacturers, the Xbox One, the PS4, and the Nintendo Switch, and we're going to start things off with the Xbox One. Now, the best thing about the Xbox One in 2018, in my opinion, had to be the rise of Game Pass. Game Pass is an absolutely phenomenal service. I absolutely love it. It's a great way to play a bunch of different games that maybe you wouldn't have paid any attention to just for a low monthly subscription fee. It's one of the most used things on my Xbox One. I'm always finding games on there that maybe I forgot about or maybe I didn't play all that much that I want to revisit again. Whether you're talking about original Xbox titles that have been upscaled, Xbox 360 games, Xbox 360 arcade games, or even Xbox One games, Xbox Game Pass is really making the Xbox One stand out in my opinion. And I think it's something that Microsoft needs to focus on going into the future because it's a service that's unrivaled on any other platform. So the rise of Game Pass is definitely the strongest point and the best point of the Xbox One in 2018. Now, on the flip side of things, the worst part of Xbox One's 2018 has to be the exclusive title lineup. It was a very, very paltry year for Xbox One exclusives. You really only had three. You had Sea of Thieves, which I got pretty bored with after a few hours. You had State of Decay 2, which I got pretty bored with after a few hours. And then you had Forza Horizon 4, which was another phenomenal entry in the Forza series. But other than that, that's all you had in the world of exclusive big releases for the Xbox Xbox One, and I feel like that definitely hurt the system. While things like Game Pass definitely helped because I was able to check out all three of these games without actually having to buy the games, I just felt like there should have been more for the Xbox One in 2018. It looks like they're trying to remedy that situation by purchasing a bunch of different developers, but you have to be honest with yourself and admit it that the Xbox One really had no games in 2018. The PlayStation 4 had an absolutely incredible year, and two of the highlights have to be the first party developed titles for the PlayStation 4. Of course, I'm talking about God of War and Spider-Man. These games were just absolutely phenomenal single player experiences, very story driven, with a lot of awesome gameplay, beautiful visuals, and they're just awesome, awesome games. It really negates the notion that single player games don't sell anymore, because we've seen games on the Nintendo Switch that were single player games, such as Super Mario Odyssey and Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, sell extremely well in 2017 and now you see it again in 2018 with Sony and the PlayStation 4. God of War and Spider-Man are arguably two of the best games of the year. Absolutely phenomenal experiences, top notch in every single department and just the real crowning jewel and highlight of the PlayStation 4 in 2018. As far as the worst aspect of the PlayStation 4 in 2018 has to be the sort of strange end of the year decisions. While the first half of the year was very strong in terms of announcements and what to look forward to in the future. The second half of the year kind of put a damper on that, in my opinion. Of course, closing the PSX event that they usually have every year was sort of a strange decision. A lot of people were looking forward to PSX in 2018, and Sony decided to cancel it. And then they announced that they would not be at E3 2019, so it's kind of just a head scratcher. Obviously, Sony is doing something. There's obviously logic behind this reasoning. Some people feel like maybe Sony has shown what they want to show with the PS4, and they want to focus on the PS5. There could be a huge event for the PS5 or Sony in 2019. That's their own sort of event, like a Nintendo Direct. But still, I feel like these decisions are very puzzling, and a lot of people are searching for answers that maybe don't quite exist. So the end of the year sort of decision making by the Sony executives for the PlayStation 4 definitely had me scratching my head. 
And finally, the Nintendo Switch had an up and down year, I feel, in my opinion. But the best part of the Nintendo Switch in 2018 has to be, of course, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. I made a video talking about Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, saying it was the most important game this generation. And a lot of people didn't understand where I was coming from. They simply read the title and then said something stupid in the comments. They didn't bother to watch the video. But if you watch the video, you sort of get my reasoning as to why. It's not just a celebration of Nintendo. It's a celebration of video games and video game history that is just unparalleled like you've never seen this sort of celebration of video games with so many different characters to unlock in the game so many different spirits to unlock in the game from various gaming franchises that you wouldn't expect to see in a super smash brothers game the gameplay is awesome it's a beautiful looking game it's a game that has literally hundreds of hours of gameplay time built into it the unlocking of characters instead of having to simply buy characters is a phenomenal decision and i'm just absolutely in love with super smash brothers ultimate definitely the highlight of the nintendo Switch in 2018. Now, the worst part of the Nintendo Switch in 2018 has to be the launch of the Nintendo Switch's online service. I don't think it's necessarily the worst thing in the world, but when Nintendo and Reggie were coming out there saying, hey, this is going to be a very robust online system, and then you don't really still have basic features, it kind of leaves a sour taste in people's mouths. And a lot of people are still a bit upset with how the Nintendo Switch's online works. Sure, it's cool to have NES games that you can play. And of course, cloud save data is very important as well, but it really feels like a misstep for Nintendo when it comes to the Nintendo Switch's online service. It was definitely a low point for the company. A lot of people are still very upset with how Nintendo Switch's online is playing out, so I hope to see some improvements in this as well because it's definitely an area that Nintendo needs to focus on. Next up, I want to talk about the biggest game surprise I had in 2018. Of course, there's going to be the best surprise and the worst surprise. The best surprise for me had to be Starlink Battle for Atlas, but only on the Nintendo Switch. If you got it on the PS4 or the Xbox One, I'm sure it's a fine game. I'm sure it's a fun game. But the Nintendo Switch version had Star Fox in it, and it had the whole Star Fox team, and of course had Star Wolf in the game as well. And I feel like that really added so much to the game. I didn't bother playing with the other characters in the Starlink universe. I honestly did didn't really care about them all that much. I just wanted a Star Fox-like experience, and this was one of the most satisfying Star Fox experiences that I've had in years. The game looked great, there's a ton of content, yes, it's a bit repetitive at times, but I had an absolute blast playing this game. I'm still 100% or trying to 100% complete the game, there's still more content for me to check out, but it's just an absolutely great game. If you own a Nintendo Switch, it's definitely a must-buy in my opinion, and was my biggest gaming surprise in a positive manner for 2018. And the worst gaming surprise I had in 2018 for me personally has to be Agony. Agony, of course, released on the PS4, the Xbox One, and PC. And I'm a big fan of horror stuff. I love horror movies and horror video games. So I was really looking forward to this game. But unfortunately, even being as big of a horror fan as I was, I just couldn't find any enjoyment in this game. It didn't look good. It didn't play good. It was extremely buggy. The AI was all over the place. Sometimes the demons were super aggressive. Sometimes they would just completely ignore you. The combat system was not non-existent. You just sort of ran past things. And of course, the biggest flaw in the game had to be the checkpoint system, which just sometimes just didn't work at all. It was an absolute terrible game just an absolute miserable game i don't think anyone really found any enjoyment in agony and you should have known it by the title of the game but unfortunately i still had high hopes for this but it was definitely my biggest gaming disappointment in 2018. retro gaming is still very very popular and we definitely saw some of the best and the worst of retro gaming in 2018. on the best side of things has to be the remasters and compilations that we got in 2018. good lord did we get a lot of awesome stuff and i think some people are not realizing how how much good stuff we got we of course had the spyro reignited trilogy which just looked absolutely beautiful you're getting three spyro games for forty dollars you had the street fighter 30th anniversary collection a great compilation of street fighter games on any platform that you want that was absolutely brilliant you had the sega genesis classics collection as well over 50 sega genesis games on any platform the snk 40th anniversary collection shenmu 1 and 2 hd like there was so much good retro stuff and remasters and hd stuff that we we got in 2018 i was just absolutely in heaven i bought all these compilations i played all these compilations i love all these compilations definitely a great year to be a modern gamer that has a retro flair in 2018 
And of course, the worst retro thing in 2018 has to be the PlayStation Classic. Come on, people. There's no doubt about it. The PlayStation Classic sucks. Yes, it's cool that you can hack it now. I definitely feel like that sort of vindicates my purchase of this thing. But come on, the lack of an interesting menu system, the fact that nine of these games ran in PAL mode, the fact that there was no borders, no filters that you could put on anything, the fact that some of these games ran so slow because they were in PAL mode. The PlayStation Classic should have been a surefire hit. It was such an easy thing to do. Yet Sony just made it so freaking lazy. And it was just such a huge disappointment. There's not many people out there that are having a blast with the PlayStation Classic unless you're hacking the thing and putting more games on there. And that's where it really gets fun. I've actually been enjoying the PlayStation Classic sh since it's been hacked. But seriously, this system should have been much better right out of the box. And that has to be one of my biggest gaming disappointments of 2018. And definitely the biggest stinker in the retro world of 2018. Next up, I want to talk about the best and the worst third party game of 2018. Obviously the best third party game of 2018 for many people, myself included, has to be Red Dead Redemption 2. The Tale of Arthur Morgan. Just what a phenomenal game. You know, a lot of people just assimilate Red Dead with Grand Theft Auto. You know, oh, it's just Grand Theft Auto in the wild, wild west. But it's so much more than that. Just the intricacies of the world. All the crazy stuff that happens in the actual world. How side missions feel like real missions and real missions sometimes just blend together with side missions and you never know what's actually a real mission or a side mission the world is just alive and breathing there's so much cool stuff to investigate there's so much cool stuff to find in the world red dead redemption 2 obviously lifts the bar in terms of storytelling and of course in terms of just what an open world game can do on a cu current console i absolutely love this game i had an absolute blast with it still not 100 percent complete with the game yet but i've definitely been enjoying my time it's something like a really good steak you just want to savor it and red dead redemption 2 was definitely the highlight of big third party games for 2018. And on the flip side, you have the low light of big third party games in 2018. That's got to be Fallout 76. Now, admittedly, I have not played the game, but from what I've seen, I don't want to play the game. When Fallout 76 was first announced, I was excited. I loved Fallout 3. Fallout 4 was pretty cool as well. So I was looking forward to playing Fallout with my friends, but stripping away all the interesting elements of what make Fallout so unique, the world itself, the characters within that world, how they got into these situations, just really made the game really just strange in my opinion. And of course, there's the fallout from the fallout situation. Things like the whole canvas bag and, you know, a bait and switch on an important item in the $200 collector's edition of this game. And then Bethesda just being like, oh, sorry. And then, oh, wait a second, we found some bags. It's just been a nightmare of a situation for Bethesda. And Bethesda really needed a big hit following up off of things like the Evil Within 2 and Wolfenstein, which didn't sell all that great. So Fallout 76 is definitely the biggest game disappointment in terms of third party games for 2018. Next up, I want to talk about the best and the worst game reveal of 2018. There were lots of reveals this year, and arguably my favorite had to be the Resident Evil 2 reveal from Sony's E3 2018. I absolutely cannot wait for this game. I'm a diehard original style Resident Evil fan, and I think Resident Evil 2 just looks absolutely draw-droppingly gorgeous. Like, I cannot wait to play this game. There's not enough positive things I can say about this game. You've seen the gameplay footage. It looks absolutely beautiful. Revisit Visiting the world of Resident Evil 2 is going to be absolutely phenomenal. And when this game was showcased at E3 2018, I was just absolutely blown away. Definitely my one of my biggest games of 2019 and definitely my favorite reveal of 2018 as well. And of course, the worst game reveal of 2018 has to be the Diablo Immortal situation. Going to BlizzCon, you would expect to see some cool stuff from Blizzard. You're paying all this money to go to this event to see what Blizzard's working on, and they end the show with Diablo Immortal, a stripped-down Diablo game for your mobile device, and then they sort of bash you and sort of talk down to you for not liking what you're seeing with this game. Do you guys not have phones? Yeah, you guys all have phones. Don't you have cell phones? Like, come on, dude. Why would you do this at BlizzCon? It was an absolute PR nightmare for Blizzard when it came to Diablo Immortal. And really, they still haven't rebounded all that great. They're still pushing more mobile games and still pushing more of their franchises onto mobile devices, which is not what Blizzard fans want to see. There was a ton of backlash from that announcement, and honestly, I feel like it was deserved because Diablo Immortal just doesn't look like a fun game, and it's not a game that people want, especially Blizzard fans. 
And the final thing that I want to talk about is the best and worst new gaming hardware for 2018. In my opinion, the best was the Arcade 1UP machines. Now, a lot of people have sort of mixed feelings on this machine. I went ahead and purchased the Street Fighter 2 uh, Championship Edition arcade cabinet, and I absolutely love it. It was pretty simple to put together. It's pretty well built. It's lightweight as opposed to a real size arcade cabinet. It's high enough and big enough for me. I just use a folding chair and I play it every day. It's a super fun system. I've had it for about two months. I play it pretty Pretty much every day and I've had no issues with the system. It's a really cool system. I'm really curious to see the future of arcade one-up machines. There's been rumors about a Mortal Kombat machine possibly coming as well. So I'm definitely in love with these arcade one-up machines. I sort of want to have like a whole miniature arcade fleet in my house now because of these arcade one-up machines. And the worst piece of gaming hardware of 2018 is, of course, the Soldier game console from Soldier Boy. Was there any doubt about this? Like, come on. This system is an absolute joke. It is a marked up AliExpress cheap Chinese knockoff system with illegal ROMs on it. And while many companies sell things with illegal ROMs on them, you are Soldier Boy. You're supposed to be a business minded person. You have to realize that Nintendo does not like things like this. Nintendo just sued a husband and wife that has probably not a lot of money to begin with for 12 million dollars for putting ROMs on a website and making money off of it. You are profiting off of these illegal ROMs and it's honestly just not a good look. But thankfully Soldier Boy has announced on Twitter that he's working on another console to supersede the Soldier game console. So that's going to be very interesting to see how that ends up being. I really feel like Soldier Boy needs to sort of look at this situation from a legal perspective because there could be some legal ramifications coming from this because the Soldier game console just just buy a Raspberry Pi. All right, and so that is the best and the worst of video games in 2018, in my humble opinion. I would love to hear what you guys think of this list and, of course, what some of your best moments and worst moments of video games in 2018 were. So let me know in the comments section down below. And as always, thank you guys for checking out this video. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications. And as always, I will catch you guys on the next video. Later.